Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I want to talk about how you can extend the lifespan, I shouldn't say lifespan, I should say battery lifespan of your Blue Eddy EB3A. And that would be by connecting it to basically another battery source to basically instead of having 268 watt hours of, uh, of power, you would have you know, over, over 1300 if you, if you connected it to a 100 amp hour battery. But there's another question about that. What if you live in an RV or, uh, you know, if your van, you don't really have access to your batteries um, very easily. You don't, you, you don't have easy access to your battery bank. Um, you know, what can you do then? You're just kind of like, well, I can't. I can't connect it to my battery, that's ridiculous. Well, there's also another method that you can do, and that is connecting it directly to your fuse block. So we're gonna go ahead and connect it to this battery first, just to show you what all it can do. And then we'll go ahead and connect it to a fuse block uh, and see what happens there. All right, well, here's the things that you're gonna need in order to connect this battery to your EB3A. Uh, first, you're going to need a little bit of uh, wire in order to make the connection. And uh, you will need to have a couple of, uh, a couple of ring connectors to, in order to connect it to, to the battery permanently. Um, if you don't want to use ring connectors, you can also use alligator clips, something like that. That would make it a lot easier to uh, connect and disconnect. But what I plan on doing is I plan on using XT60 connectors so I can make a permanent wire and just disconnect it right from the XT60 connector. And then you will also need a, uh, a 7909 barrel plug, uh, pretty much adapter. You can get all this stuff on Amazon. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, link all this in my description so that way you can easily find it. So let's get this out of the way. And first, let me show you these barrel plugs. This pack came in a pack of two, and they're basically just the uh, 7909 barrel plug and a positive and negative wire coming out the other end. And I think the best way, the best way to make this as flexible as possible is, like I said, connect it to an XT60 connector. That way, you can use just this one, this one plug and plug it into multiple uh, choices, I guess you could say, multiple choices of power inputs, uh, whether that being just a simple battery or a fuse block on a battery bank, or maybe you have something else uh, like a, uh, a buck converter that would convert it up, you know, it would double the voltage and that would give you actually twice the charging power. So let's go ahead and put an XT60 on this first. Okay, and to make this connection, all I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple of butt splices. I'm also going to use my, uh, my wire stripping tool. And you have to use a crimper in order to get a really good connection. So first we're going to go ahead and strip these a little bit. And we'll go ahead and strip these as well. All right, make sure when you're crimping to use the right, uh, the right spot on your crimper because you can see it's, it's labeled red, blue, and yellow, and I'm using a blue butt splice, so make sure you use the right one. That will give you the best crimp, and you should be able to tug on it, and it shouldn't move. And this is 14-gauge wire, and I'm using a 16 to 14-gauge butt splice, so the, the fit is pretty tight, so you kind of have to twist it in. All right, look at that. That's done. And now we'll do the same thing with this side. And just make sure you put red to red, to red and black to black. Here we go, perfect. Should tug on it and it shouldn't move. So what we'll go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and heat shrink these. So that way it is fully prepared. All right, and I just got done heat shrinking this and I realized that I think I used the wrong XT60 plug. 
I believe that for, for the plug that doesn't have power constantly going to it, you want to use the male side of the adapter um, because you don't want constant power if you have it permanently plugged onto a battery or a battery bank, a fuse block. You don't want to have these connectors uh, unprotected like this all the time because something could fall in there and short it out. So I need to cut this and redo this plug. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, I fitted the, uh, what I to believe the correct XT60 plug onto this barrel plug. And uh, to make it a little bit more clean, I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap it up with some, uh, some electrical tape. All right, now I believe this wire is done. So let's go ahead and make our other wire this time we're going to use the female end of the XT60. Go ahead and put the butt splices on. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to roll out, I don't know, let's just do like four or five feet of 16 gauge wire. Okay. And then we'll strip the ends. And when, when you're working with wire, I, I believe that it's always good practice to make sure your wires are the same length. All right, and now all we gotta do is on one side, we're gonna connect these, uh, these ring terminals for the battery. And on the other side, we're gonna connect another XT60, which is right here. Next, I'll go ahead and heat shrink my, uh, all my connections and we are ready to go. Okay, now look at this. Everything is nicely shrunken down. We've got perfect connections. So let's go ahead and uh, connect these to the battery, plug in our barrel plug and plug it into the, the, into the Blue Eddy and we'll see what happens. All right, so let's go ahead and connect these up. Positive to positive, negative to negative. Make sure you tighten them down all the way so you get a good, nice good connection. And now they terminate to this XT60 connector right here. So now all we, got, all we have to do now is just plug it in and see, and now we have a connection to a 7909 barrel plug. Now the question is, will it actually charge the device? Because right now it is at 30%. Now, in theory, it should, because this battery is probably right around, I don't know, 13.3 volts, I'm guessing. And this Blue Eddy, on this input right here, it can handle between 12 and 28 volts. So anything over Anything over 12 volts should charge this Blue Eddy. But let's go ahead and try it. And there you go. Let's take a, let's take a closer look. You can see that the Blue Eddy is charging with, um, well, 99 watts. And with this setup, you've essentially added another 1,280 watt hours to your EB3A. And starting at 30%, uh, the EB3A does say that it would take 1.8 hours to charge this thing back up. Okay, the next question is, what if you had a 24 volt battery? I mean, would that work? Uh, or if you had two 12 volt batteries uh, connected in series? you know, what kind of numbers would you get? I mean, would it basically double the charging rate of this EB3A? I believe it will because no matter what the voltage is, it always will accept up to 8.5 amps. So if you double the voltage and you keep the amperage the same, it should double the amount of wattage that this will accept. So that is a, uh, that's a good way of increasing the amount of wattage going into this unit. Um, if you only have one battery, a good way of being able to increase that voltage is by purchasing a buck converter 
And what that does is it converts the voltage from 12 volts to 24 volts. So it would basically just double the voltage. The only problem with that is that you would be maxing out, you would be maxing out that buck converter so it would get hot pretty fast. So that's something that you would need to think about. But the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna show you that not only can you connect this EB3A just directly to a battery, you can actually connect it to a fuse block. So that way you actually have the added protection of a fuse and that way you can also use your entire battery bank to charge up your EB3A. Okay, here we are at my 12 volt battery bank fuse block. Now, if anyone's been following my channel, they know that this fuse block is actually connected to four, uh, four different 12 volt batteries. Uh, most of them are different amp hours, but the whole, bat the whole battery bank now equals out to be uh, 525 amp hours. But what really matters is to make sure that the voltage is between 12 and 28 volts. So let's go ahead and check the voltage of this, of this fuse block to make sure everything is good. All right, so let's check here and here. And our voltage is 13.14. So we are in the range that this Blue Eddy can accept. So what we're gonna do is what I did is I just quickly swapped out the terminal connectors on, instead of having those ring terminals, I just swapped them out with these, uh, these different terminals to be able to connect to this battery bank quite easily. And since the Blue Eddy can accept up to 8.5 amps, I'm gonna go ahead and use a 10 amp fuse. So that way if anything ever happens, uh, this, this line to the Blue Eddy will be protected. So let's go ahead and just put that right here. Okay. And I'll go ahead and go ahead and disconnect this. So that way it's just the, uh, the female part of the XT60 and these connectors. I'm just doing that for demonstration. You don't really need to do that, but I just wanted to show you. So let's go ahead and connect the negative up. And we'll just connect it up here. All right. And we're gonna put the positive on where I put the fuse. There we go. And now we should have 13.14 volts in this plug. So let's go ahead and plug it in to our XT60 connector. And there we go. And now the wiring is complete. It's wired into my fuse block. And let's try out the uh, let's try out the Blue Eddy and see if it charges up. And there we go. It's charging with 99 watts. And I believe that's as high as it will go with the 13 a 13 uh, or a 12 volt battery bank. Now instead of having 268 watt hours for your uh, for your Blue Eddy. With this battery bank, I now have 7,000 watt hours of use out of this Blue Eddy. And the great part about these Blue Eddies is that um, you can charge them and use the, uh, the DC and AC devices on the unit at the same time. And let me just show you that. Turn the AC on. Got this light plugged in. So look at that. It's still inputting 98 watts and it's outputting 96 watts because this is a 100 watt old, old incandescent light bulb. So we're basically using this and we're not, we're basically not gaining any power to this battery, but we're not losing any power either. All right, well, I hope that this shows you just how versatile these Blue Eddy EB3As can be. Uh, even though they only come with 268 watt hours of power, uh, I mean, if you just make a simple plug and you already have uh, an external battery uh, or even a battery bank, either being 12 volts or 24 volts, you can increase the, the total amount of watt hours in this unit 
to like I just demonstrated, uh, you know, up to 7,000 watt hours of, of electricity. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you have any questions about, um, you know, how I made these wires or how I plugged them in, um, or if you just need a better understanding of what exactly you can plug into these, uh, please leave it in the comments. I hear my dogs barking upstairs, so I believe it's time to go. So thank you so much for watching this video, and y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.